What's up, Rocks? Welcome back to All the Castles, the show where we visit all the castles in the UK. Today, we're here at Brough Castle on the border between North Yorkshire and Cumbria. It's pretty substantial, there's a lot of it left. There's a horse there. Hello, and as Simon said, this is Brough Castle. It was actually built on the site of a Roman fort, if you can do see some of the earthworks at this point. That was known as Vertigris, and it's thought to have been used right up until the point that the Romans left Britain. So we're now going to go into the castle. Uh, it's not too far away from Broome Castle, and a lot of the same personalities were involved in building and maintaining the castle, so they're actually covered in the same guidebook. The main difference is that Broom Castle charges admission and Brough, being more ruinous, doesn't. Though it's a bit uh, restrictive around here. You can't park in the car park unless you're visiting the ice cream place. And there's loads of notices about not flying uh, drones around here. So, uh, anyway, we'll go now and have a look inside. Let's go, kids. Right, we'll go for a closer look at the keep a bit later on, but uh, this is, it's worth mentioning that the foundations of the keep are probably the oldest part of the castle, which was built originally around 1100 during the reign of... Uh, well, sorry, just before 1100, during the reign of uh, William Rufus, who conquered these lands from the Scots and needed to boot some forts to uh, protect it. But uh, most, uh, in fact, the entirety of that keep was eventually destroyed by the Scots, and uh, that was during the siege by the Scottish King William the Lion. Most of what we see today was built by uh, Robert de Voipoint, the same guy who built Brougham Castle and uh, part of the land grant by King John, and it passed into the hands of the Clifford family in the uh, 13th century. This is what's left of the gatehouse, uh, another of the oldest parts of the castle. It was once three stories high and uh, also used to bear a plaque uh, commemorating the restoration of the castle by Lady Anne Clifford. This is the inside of the uh, bailey. You can see it's quite, actually quite a narrow castle altogether. And uh, these buildings on the left, as you will go in, these are the old stables. And uh, this was an important military castle, so it was necessary to keep uh, horses here for you know going out into battle. And then when at Lady Anne Clifford took over the property in the 17th century. She had a lot of horses. She liked to travel in a posh carriage drawn by six horses, so there'd still be the need for a bit of stabling. We're now in the ground floor of the keep. There's an entrance here and a bit of information. And, uh, this is, I think, the best place for getting the sense of height. And yes, as I was saying earlier, there are some railings at the top there, so I'm guessing at some point you were allowed to climb to the top of the keep but uh, uh, they obviously don't want you to do that now. And, uh, 
Yeah. Now, there is this big open gash in the castle <laughs> and uh, unfortunately this part of the keep fell down almost immediately after the building passed into the property of the government so uh, wasn't a very auspicious start for the uh, stewardship and uh, yeah there's another quite large slice missing there but it sort of adds to the romance of the site I think Got some very narrow arrow loops facing north, so uh, I guess this is where they expected trouble to come from in the direction of Scotland. And of course, as usual, you've got uh, the uh, holes to support the roof beams. Uh, I think this was originally three stories with uh, sort of basement and then the Lord's Chamber where he received guests on the first floor and then his private rooms at the top. I wonder how good the echo is in here. Here you can see that there are two uh, big chunks of masonry left over from when the uh, tower collapsed and you'll notice that this tower that is still standing there is a quite a crack uh, all the way up to the top so one hopes that they're monitoring that and keeping it safe for visitors uh, the larger windows here were put in by Lady Anne Clifford who wanted to let a bit more light into the building so uh, that's why the, those are wider and less militarily useful. Simon is standing by a couple of latrines which were built into the wall and I uh, hope he's not going to demonstrate how to use them. Yeah, okay, don't go too far, Simon. But uh, yeah. If, if you were passing by below the uh, walls at this point, you would want to uh, not get too near in case somebody was sprinkling or, or even what is. Well, it looks like people have been using it for its intended purposes. Now these north facing buildings, or the, the roof foundations of them, were a brew house, a bake house and a kitchen. And they were all built by Lady Anne Clifford when she took uh, possession of the property in 1643. Uh, from 1521 until Lady Anne took possession of the castle, it had been in ruins because one of her ancestors uh, had a big party at Christmas and ended up burning the castle down, or at least all the wooden bits, and it was... It was just left derelict for about 130 years until Lady Anne got hold of it. This was the site of the original hall of the castle, but there's not really much left of it now. And uh, these buildings mainly date from the 14th and 15th century. This little building looks like a dungeon, but is more likely to have been a larder just for storage. Not storing the prisoners. Well, just storing food and records and other stuff. Right, there's an existing fireplace here, but above it, in the walls, you will see uh, the remains of medieval windows. And, uh, the 
great chamber of Lady Anne's day would have been above our heads now. But, uh, all the stories are gone. And uh, that looks like a bit of a chimney there, doesn't it? Or is that another latrine? Who knows? But let's have a closer look. Well, we're now in uh, the semicircular building in the southeastern corner of the castle, known as Clifford's Tower. It was built by Lady Anne's ancestor Robert Clifford in the late uh, 14th century, sorry, 13th century. And uh, Lady Anne's room was at the top of the building. She'd have looked through uh, those windows there, which she probably put in there, 17th century in style. This bottom room we were standing in was actually occupied by the lord dress of the castle. And uh, so there was a mixture of uh, servant and aristocratic uh, accommodation in the castle. And her steward also lived here for a time. Yeah, I said, yeah, I said that earlier on. He must have allowed you to go up there at one point, but uh, probably health and safety have decided to stop it. Yes, mixture of different types of window here. Uh, 17th century light window and two uh, narrow military windows. So this is looking at Clifford's Tower from the uh, outside. You can see a lot of the uh, facing stone has uh, fallen away over the years, revealing the rubbly stuff underneath. And you've got the remains of the moat here and uh, some uh, earthen banks and it stretches across there to the tree. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's video. Uh, like and subscribe or I will drive my um, car into your house. <laughs>